All right, I'd like to call the July 2024 ZBA meeting to order. Will the clerk, clerk please call the roll? Matt Kaiser. Present. Richard Brooks. Present. Keith Perkins. Here. Kenneth Vincent. Here. Brad Fredette. Present. Okay, the first order of business is approval of the minutes of the J June 5th, 2024 meeting. What's the wish of the board? Mr. Brooks? I'll make a motion to approve them as presented. Okay, we have a motion to approve them as presented, seconded by Mr. Perkins. Any discussion on that? I'm going to abstain. I was not here last month. Also abstained. Okay, so all those in favor <coughs> of approving the minutes, raise your right hand. Motion passes, 3-0. Three, three <coughs> Number two, old business. Any old business that may come before the board? Ms. None at this time. Any old business from board members? Seeing none, we'll move on to new business. First order of business, item three alpha, is Steve Klaus is seeking a variance from table 5A1 to construct a fifth unit in an existing building on a property located at 16 Walnut Street in a residential multifamily R3 district, assessors map eight. Um, there, will be a there would be a public hearing, but the applicant has requested that we continue this until the August 7th meeting so that they could have their attorney attend. Discussion by the board. So the chair would entertain a motion to continue it to August 7th. <coughs> Mr. Fredette. Make a motion to continue the application to the August 7th meeting. Mr. Vincent second it. Any discussion on the motion? The motion is continued to August 7th. All those in favor, raise your right hand. Motion passes. Item three, Bravo. Heather Nash is seeking a variance from table 4A3 for a group child care home, in-home daycare on a property located at 350 Old Rochester Road in the residential slash single family R1 district, assessors map 68, lot 5G. There will be a public hearing. I will open the public hearing. Hey, Ms. Crosley. Okay, um, so as stated, the applicant is seeking to establish an in-home daycare, group child care home, um, which is what the term our ordinance uses, um, to care for not more than 17 children at one time. Um, this is allowable as an accessory use to the residential use um, in the R1 under a special exception. With note six, it says it has to meet requirements for home occupations as outlined in section eight of this ordinance and comply with state licensing rules where applicable. Um, so because Section 8 home occupation requires that the use be conducted entirely within the dwelling or accessory building, and the proposed use of the in-group child care home would also have outdoor play area, we are having the applicant seek a variance to, um, for the approval of this application. Um, and there is a uh, section about group sizes as well. They're looking to have more than the group sizes discusses in the home occupation ordinance. Um, this lot was created in a subdivision in 1999, and that is all I have for the property, unless you have questions. Questions, Ms. They have addressed the questions. Mr. Brooks. So are we actually hearing a special exception and a variance in this case? Just a variance. So similar to like the kennel, um, we had a few months ago where part of the criteria of a special exception to meet it, you have to meet um, all the ordin other ordinances. And because they wouldn't be able to meet the home occupation ordinance as outlined, they then would need a variance. So it's a variance instead of a special exception. So in theory, the variance <coughs> supersedes the need for the special exception and takes precedent goes over and above. Okay. I just kind of thought it would include a special exception the variance for the outdoor part is how I would have understood it but I guess I see where you're coming from mr. Vincent thank you mr. chairman so um, just point of clarification a definition so does that mean they're not going to be living at the home they would still live at the home yeah. they would still live at the home so in this in this exception that means that they can't live at the home no they can still okay so What's, so what's so the, a special exception, which is doesn't require a variance, it's just right. it's a little less than a variance. If they, they wanted to open up a group home, w with which allows up to twelve children, right. they could get that using the special exception criteria. Right. But in this case, they're asking for seventeen, which is above what a special exception would allow. So that comes to my next question. So, uh, if they were denied it, they allowed to have twelve. 
they would have to go they have, would have to come back to us for a special exception okay thank you <clears throat> any other questions for Ms. Crosley okay will the applicant please come forward state your name and explain why or where, why or how you meet the five criteria Is it green? Is there a green light on the base? Right, no, right, right here. Right, there should be a green light on, on your side. Push the button. Now there is. Is there that better? Go. Sorry. That's all right. uh, my name's Heather Nash. Um, I'm obviously here to request a variance to allow um, a family group child care home um, at my property at 350 Old Rochester Road. Um, I don't have an application in front of me. I thought that I was gonna <laughs> have access to one. Ask and you shall receive. Thank you. <laughs> um, yeah, so we put a lot of thought into answering these questions um, about how this is uh, a very reasonable request and how there's not really any negative effects on the surrounding properties. Um, it's at least 100 feet from any abutting properties, um, and right now that one is actually vacant. So the closest one besides that is um, over 300 feet to the front of the next property. Um, it has its own public, I mean, uh, private septic system, so it wouldn't put any wear and tear on any private, um, I'm sorry, I'm nervous. That's okay. Take on any um, public systems. Um, noise complaints shouldn't be an issue because of the distance between the properties. Um, fencing is intended to be put up around the child's outside play space. Um, you know, the road that it's on is already kind of a moderate to high traffic road. So, you know, 12 parents coming in and out every day um, shouldn't really be a problem. Um, we can accommodate all parking needs in the driveway. Um, it's a duplex, so it has a really big U-shaped driveway. Um, we would live on one side and have the daycare in the other side, which still technically um, counts as living on the property. Um, as Dana said, the variance is asking for outside play space for the kids. So um, not all of it would be contained inside, but like I said before, that would be fenced in. Um, I think that's really it. Um, if you guys have any questions, I'm more than willing to answer them. Okay, so how it goes is then we're gonna ask to see if anyone else wants to speak. And if they do, they'll come up and then we'll have you come back up to ask answer questions. Okay. All right. So we'll have plenty of chances. Okay. Is anyone here to speak for or against? Nope. Stay right Just there. Just stay right here? Okay. Stay right there. <laughs> Just have to give the opportunity for the public to speak. Okay. Okay, so questions for the applicant. All right. It's pretty Get straightforward. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so you want to have an outside play area for the children? Yes. Okay, so, and you talked about fencing. What do you, first of all, where is this outside play area going to be, and what are you talking for fencing? Um, so it's, an in-home daycare is really just having more kids at an already, like, residential playground in a backyard. So it would literally just be in the backyard. I don't have a specific plan for the fencing. It would be something that meets licensing standards, which I'm assuming would be at least four feet tall. I'm not sure if it would be wood or metal. It would have to have a gate on the outside for emergency purposes. Um, it would really just be in the backyard of the property. There would be no commercial grade structures or anything. It's all <coughs> residential grade stuff because it's in home. <coughs> Excuse me. So uh, I'm, I'm going to ask her kind of a specific question. Do you intend to, you just say back, do you intend it to be behind the front edge of the house or behind the back edge no, of the house? No, everything will be in the backyard. So um, I did put that in here as well as that we don't plan on having any equipment. And I'm okay with that being conditioned as well. No playground equipment or kids in the front yard at all. It would be completely side and backyard okay. that you cannot see from the front of the property. Okay. Yeah. One, one thing we would probably consider is, is that we would, would want it in the back of the yard, um, and I'm, I'm just speaking for myself, mm -hmm. and somehow screened from the road. Yeah. I'm okay with putting up a privacy fence. Um, like I said, it is a duplex, so we do plan on having like the middle section of the fence that separates the other side of the duplex from... Um, the side that we're talking about have a privacy fence just for our own personal privacy as well. So, um, you know, having a privacy fence facing the road is not an issue either. Not that I think it matters. But what side of the house would be the daycare? Um, if you're looking at it, the left side. The left side. Yep. So, okay. So it's unit one and unit two. It would be unit one. Okay. So the you talk about 17 children. 
Maximum, yes. So it's 12 infant to preschool age children and then the option to have five after school kids, which for the hours that I'm operating would only be a half an hour a day. Okay. So is that a state limit or is yes. that your own limit? That's a state limit. That's the state. So yep. that's the max state limit for a license. Yep. For a group license. Yes. Okay. So drop off of children. Uh, and this is going to seem, I think the answer is obvious, but I'm going to ask anyway, do you intend to drop, have any children be dropped off out by the road? No, except for off of the school bus, but someone will be there to receive them off the school bus, which is, I mean, a public school system, which is pretty normal anyway, but not the preschool age children, no. Okay. And you have room to turn a vehicle around in, yes. in the yard to... Yes, it's a large U-shaped driveway with multiple turnaround spots. Okay. Yep. Mr. Vincent. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thanks a lot for taking my question. I, I just, I look at this map here. Yes. And um, I don't know if these property lines are a survey line. It looks like this house is pretty close to the property line. It is, and the owner right now, so we're intending to purchase this property as soon as I get this approval, and the <coughs> owner and her father own that abutting lot that's right up against it, so I think that's where the building came in when she built this, was that she already owned the lot next door, so she put it right up on the edge. And I do believe that there is an updated survey of the lines, and it's actually over just a smidge further where it's not up against the driveway, uh, but it's pretty close to that. So what you're saying, if I may, Your Honor, I mean, you're, yeah, yeah, Mr. Chairman. Um, so what you're saying is this is a two piece of property that's owned by one person right now. The abutting empty lot to the to the right, if you're looking at it, I believe, and the duplex property, yes. Okay. Um, because uh, being this close, I think you'd have to be. Uh, I don't know if this has anything to do with this board or not, but you'd have to be uh, so many feet back from the property line. Uh, the daycare playground will be on the opposing side of where that property line is on the, the other side of the duplex yeah it's right. not going to be on the right side so that shouldn't be an issue and i and and i also see that the driveway kind of comes almost into that property line also that part of the driveway <laughs> was actually removed because she had it up for sale last year uh, when we rented it so she actually removed the section of the driveway that was touching the property line so that's no longer an issue okay thank you you're welcome uh, mr brooks so I, <clears throat> my question is concerning the 17 kids. Is that f based on how many people are working there caring for the children? Yeah, so there's their safety ratio. So um, it's six children per adult, and then you can have 12 with five after school kids um, with two teachers. So it would be myself and um, my assistant over here. So, so the whole reason for the limit is you anticipate having two workers. And that's where you come so, up with the So the limit is put for, that's the maximum amount that you're allowed to have for any in-home child care, whether it's a group or um, just a regular um, in-home daycare. But yes, to have that many, you do have to have at least two teachers. And then obviously there will be, you know, helping hands and substitutes and stuff like that. So there will be two people there at all times. So, we've, so even if you had more, the state limits it to 17. You yeah, couldn't. yeah, I can't have more legally. Okay. Um, just trying to. Yeah wrap my head around why there's certain numbers and limits and yeah so I mean they add the extra five for after school age kids because they're a little bit more self-sufficient you know they're not infants mm -hmm. they don't need as much um, direct supervision so 12 is a little bit usually it's six per teacher which makes it the 12 which is kind of easy math and then the five kind of throws it off a little bit but that's just because they're older okay that's it for the moment okay further questions for the applicant Okay, just let me make sure. Yeah. Um, for a couple seconds here. Can I just say one thing before you guys? Continue? Absolutely, we're going to give you a chance to make a final statement. Absolutely. Is it now? But can no, I speak but now? you can. You can say anything. Okay, you want right I was now. just going to say it looks like a few of you are concerned about that abutting lot, the empty lot right next door, and I'm okay with having um, like a contingency on it being a certain distance of the edge of the playground to that lot if that is something that makes people more comfortable is there any uh, well, 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 well something is there any what would be the <laughs> zoning requirement would it be 10 feet of the what is it, adjacent property line um i can double check what the setbacks would be for it if it was a structure that they were putting up fences if it's just the fence 
they can legally put a fence up on the property line. Yep. We recommend typically that people don't put it right on the property line for maintenance. Um, it is in R1. Is There's no sewer. It's on private septic. Correct. Oh. Yep. Okay. Um, so the side setback water, city water? Mm, I don't know. Yes. Yes, it is. Okay. Um, it would be a side setback of 15 feet. Yeah, I mean, that, that's more than enough. It's about 90 to 100 feet right now from, from the lot next door, so. From the lot, from the? The, prop, the property next door, the, the outside play area would be 90 to 100 feet away from that, so I was just saying. From that structure, or, the, or from the lot line? From the lot line of the, the property or Where the lot next proposed. door, it's an empty lot, to the fence that I would put up. <coughs> the proposed the play, play area is more than the required, like if she was going to build a garage or yep. some right, sort of structure. Right, right, right. okay. Yep. <coughs> All right. Perfect. Any uh, further questions from the applicant? To the applicant. Okay. Now you can have your final statement. Um, okay. I feel like this is a very reasonable request. I think that our country is truly in a child care crisis. Um, our intent is to give back to the community, create opportunities for parents, um, older teens looking for jobs with reasonable hours that are not working them into the ground, um, just providing enriching care and uplifting the community with this plan. So hopefully all of you guys see that and can also see that um, you know there's no negative impact on the community or surrounding properties. Thank you for your time. Okay, thank you very much. Should I sit now? Have a seat. Okay. <laughs> with that, I'm gonna close the public hearing. Discussion by the board. Mr. Vincent and Mr. Fredette. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. So I have really no concerns with this at all. Um, <clears throat> You know, well, uh, can I can I go ahead? We need to uh, regional. Oh, impact. that's right too. Regional impact. My my fault. Does anyone see any regional impact? I don't see any regional. I don't impact. see any. Mr. Brooks. Make a motion. I move the variance request for Heather Nash does not have potential for regional impact. We have a motion. We have a second by Mr. Perkins. Discussion on motion that there is no regional impact. See a none. Raise your oh, raise your right hand. Motion passes 5-0. Go ahead, Mr. Vincent. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Yeah, I don't see any issues with this whatsoever. Uh, very spacious area. Um, and, you know, when you talk about today's uh, child care, uh, and it's going to be uh, inspected by the state, uh, it's going to be inspected by the local fire department. Um, it's set up with a lot of regulations that they have to meet. Uh, you know, you're talking about egress. You're talking about... Um, <clears throat> um, fire suppression you're talking about uh alarm um <clears throat> security so um i think it's a good spot i mean it's it's away from a lot of different things um it's probably going to be a like a nine to five type of business um or a little earlier maybe but i don't see uh any issues with this thank you okay well, mr burdett <laughs> oh i thought you had your hand up nope mr brooks just noting that normally this would be allowed by special exception you know I, I feel that you know it should be allowed for that reason normally we'd go through that list of things but because the variants were not um it's simply just the outdoor play area which i, I think and it's the a number of people number of students and the number of students okay. so you know the outside player is, is one of the criteria right. that yes. forces the variance and I think it's foolish to even consider having a child care place without an outdoor element to it. So I think this is just poorly written the way home occupations would have to be entirely inside in this particular situation. Um, as far as the extra kids go, you know, yeah, it's 12 for the duration, but only five additional for an hour or two afterward, after school. I, I think it's pretty reasonable and I, I don't see why we wouldn't grant this. Okay. Our discussion. Yeah, a couple of things look, looking at it. I, I think that uh, they can support this with a couple conditions. I think that we need to ensure that the play area, outside play area is behind the house and somehow shielded from the road. And we can just leave it at that. They can use vegetation or they can use a fencing just so that it's not, you know, it's obvious. Um, and maybe we even though it's common sense maybe that parent drop off and pick up won't uh, happen at the road um, because we don't 
we don't want that's one of this is a busy road we don't want congestion in a row that would be an impact to the community uh, having drop off and pick up school buses I understand um, there's two things I was considering I don't think I think I don't think it'll affect uh, surrounding properties value values it's it's mostly contained it, inside there will be some outside children playing you know making noise during the day is gonna be no different it's not gonna affect surrounding property values it's definitely as the applicant pointed out uh, not contrary to public interest it's actually beneficial to the public um, daycare is a, a, a definitely a, a current issue I think the size of the property makes it unique and supports I think the uh, ordinances are written for a typical neighborhood uh, in which you have small lots quarter acre lots half half acre lots in this case we have a two acre lot the house is set back from the uh, from the road so I think it's definitely unique in that sense that it, that they are unfairly burdened um, by the ordinance and if, because they have this two acre lot that could support this uh, much better um, does substantial justice for the applicant and I don't think it's contrary to the spirit of the ordinance so I can support it um, I just think we might want to consider putting um, some stipulations on it or, on the app on the uh, approval now the number of students we need to specifically state the number of students approved in the motion Ms. Crosley um, yes please so, um, or at least as like either in the motion or as a condition um, and then if it is that you would grant to allow for the seven them as the applicant has requested 17 um, it would also require uh, site plan approval of some level Okay, now we don't have to review. specify that, correct? Or do no, we? because I think the ordinances, our regulations, will govern that. Okay. So, <clears throat> so with site plan regulation going before the planning board, essentially, they would actually vet out any park, you know, pick up and drop off, I would imagine. So it may go before planning board, or it may just go through minor site plan. Um, it will go through the vetting of what level that is. Um, it could govern that, but I think that if it's an important aspect to your decision making process that we should put it as a uh, condition if it's not um, important to the decision making process or feel strongly that you need feel it needs to be on there I'd say you wouldn't need to do it it's up to the board ultimately but you could put that as a condition for how that use is then why you're granting the variance Mr. Fredette if we're talking about buffers is it worth because of the proximity of the structure to the property line to include a condition that proper fencing or buffering be placed between the property and the abutting property because assumably someday well not assumably someday that lot may be built on and it is right on the property line certainly at least something we can consider absolutely Mr. Brooks my thoughts on this is there's a lot of land there um, they're there first so if somebody decides to move in and build maybe they'll just look next door and say either I want to be near the kids or I want to put my house further away from the kids you know it yeah, first yeah I just I, I don't see that being a consideration obviously there's gonna be some sort of fence to contain the children for safety reasons so I I don't see that we have to get that picky about it and just like with the pick up and drop off I'm sure a site plan would vet that we're just really here for a variance I don't I'm, I'm sure safety just common sense people would pull off the road <laughs> I'd say that but then <laughs> never mind <laughs> leave it that further discussion all right what's the wish of the board Mr. Brooks after re review of the application, the file, and all the information presented to the board, I feel that all five criteria have been satisfied because of the discussion and questions here tonight. And I move that the request for Heather Nash for variance from Table 4.A.3, Group Care Home, In-Home Daycare, Use on a Property Located at 350 Old Rochester Road, be granted with the condition that the number of kids be limited to 17. I'll second that. Okay, we have a motion. We have seven, limit to 17. Um, you, you didn't request or you don't want to put any limit on where the outdoor play area can be? I don't feel it needs to be done. Okay. I'll second that. 
for a discussion. Okay. Okay, so we have a motion to the table that uh, for approval of variance uh, that limits the, it's basically approving the group child daycare uh, and that the outside be limited to 17 children. All those in favor of the motion, raise your right hand. Those opposed, 5-0, passes. The motion passes, <coughs> the variance is granted. There you go. And you're all set. Thank you so much. You're welcome. All right, second item on the agenda. Um, Crystal Lovett Schulte is seeking a variance from Table 4A5 for a motor vehicle garage repair use on a property located at 40 Main Street in the Business B District, Assessor's Map 11, Lot 204, ZBA Case 07 2024. I'll open the public hearing. Ms. Mears, I mean, Ms. Mears, sorry, Ms. Cross. <laughs> So the, um, as stated, the applicant is seeking to establish a motor vehicle repair garage utilizing the existing structure on a 0.19 acre parcel. Um, if the variance is granted, this also would be reviewed to the level of, with the site plan regs, to see a level of review um, by that. Um, motor vehicle repair garage station, um, though the, I provided the definition for you, I'm not going to read it through for you. Um, Though it's located in the form based codes overlay gateway subdistrict, uh, Main Street Area 3, permitted uses include for that district are residential and upper stories, lodging, professional services and offices, eating, drinking establishments, retail personal services, civic and other similar uses um, by conditional use permit by the planning board. This use is not allowed in the business zoning district, which is the base zone of this um, area and is not considered a similar use um, after further investigations of the uses and considerations. The applicant has addressed all of the comments. They were relative cases recently um, subject to the property. They did go through conceptual reviews. Um, there's been two different applicants that have done that for with the planning board to discuss proposed use. Um, a site plan review did get started but never did go to fruition for one. Um, and as I mentioned, it has been determined that it is not a similar use and so it wouldn't be the conditional use permit. So therefore, the applicant is before you for a variance. Question for Ms. Crosley. Mr. Vincent. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. So for years, um, uh, first of all, there's an auto repair shop that sits right, if you're facing the building, to the left. And for years, this structure was an auto body repair shop. Um, uh, so it doesn't take into consideration that that type of uh, occupancy was there for like 50 years. So no, because count, um, council voted to change the zoning ordinance in 2013. And so once if so then it became not a permitted use. And if the permitted not permitted use lapses for more than one year, it is no longer permissible and requires the variance. So I know that, but I wanted you to say that because I want everybody else to understand that too, because I know that that's what happens yeah. with these properties. And people are like, well, there's a building right next door to it. So <laughs> yeah, thank you for the is, explanation yep. because you did it a lot better than I could because <laughs> that's what you do every day. That would be considered a non-conforming use and they can continue <clears throat> to operate because their use has not lapsed. If they did lapse in use for one year, it would not be able to continue the use it would be before us that is correct thank you other questions for Ms. Crosley seeing so you none know, the applicant please come forward and explain how you meet the five criteria awesome thank you guys so much for having me Good to see you all and you are I'm Christopher Schulte I'm the owner of gas money automotive um, obviously I know Dana and Anna very well um, but it's very nice to meet all of you today um, I figured I prepared just a little something here to go through. Then you guys can get to know me too as a person. Um, I'm 30 years old. I'm from Berwick, Maine, next town over. Um, I own property in Berwick. I grew up here, live here, I'm part of this community. Um, I'm currently, I'm an ASC certified service manager. Um, I run the Meineke Car Care in Rochester, New Hampshire. You can tell I came right from work. I'm in my work clothes. Um, my my Meineke car care, it's one of the busiest in the country. Um, we've got a 4.9 star on Google out of 
740 reviews. Um, so, you know, I've got a really good reputation where I am. Um, we were in the top 25 out of all mine keys in the country um, as far as sales go. Um, my prior experience, I was a master certified Volkswagen service advisor. Um, so altogether in this industry, I've been doing this for about 10 years. Obviously, I'm pretty young, but I've been doing it for a third of my life. Um, so obviously, I'm seeking to um, get a variance to operate an automotive repair facility right downtown, um, 40 Main Street, as we discussed. Um, I do understand this is in the business uh, district, and there are several criteria that I need to meet. I'll run through those. Um, kind of the best way that my brain can put this is to just hit every one of these points as we go down. So that's what I'm going to do. Um, so the first one would be that the variance is not contrary to public interest. Um, I think that this improves the community having a business that looks well maintained and cared for instead of you know vacant and abandoned um, right downtown. Um, you know the my intent is to hire employees to work at this facility. Um, and obviously I've seen all these improvements that you guys have been making downtown um, over the last 10, 15 years. High Street has been totally gone through and redone. It's beautiful. Everything looks a lot better than it did when I was growing up and I, I recognize that. Um, so I, I don't think this is contrary to public interest. And I do think the spirit of the ordinance is observed and wouldn't con uh, conflict with the purpose of the ordinance. Um, there is an existing auto garage abutting right next door. Um, so I don't think that this materially changes the community that it's in. Um, I don't think that this would negatively impact the school system at all. In fact, something that I've discussed would be, you know, possibly allowing um, some of the Summersworth vocational students to intern or learn under, you know, some of my techs, you know, to get into the business and learn what it's all about. Something I'd be really interested in doing. Um, it's our understanding that Summersworth has sufficient capacity for water and sewer for this. Um, my water usage would be really minimal. I mean, bathroom, you know, this just, it's a single bathroom sink toilet and then um, a shop sink, you know, to wash hands in. I really can't imagine I'm going to use very much of that. Um, from a police standpoint, uh, this property would be in use and less apt to be broken into or vandalized. Um, and I'm happy to talk with the fire marshal to make sure I can meet all fire codes that I would need to. Um, so let me move on to the next one. Um, so let's see, um, this wouldn't be contrary to the spirit uh, of the ordinance as it maintains a clean, walkable, thriving downtown. Um, and it would be putting an unused building to use and bringing jobs into the community. Um, I, I look forward to being a focal point. I know that the International Children's Festival is literally right in front of the building there. Um, I'd love to participate in anything publicly like that too and, you know, be beneficial to you guys if I can um, in that use. Um, so another thing that I know it on here too, and I don't know if this is able to be done, but I'd be more than happy to work on any of the public vehicles, um, you know, for, for the city or for a police or anything like that too. And I'd certainly do a discounted rate to help out on that end. Um, so the third one would be substantial justice being done. Um, so all of the hazardous waste material, I know that was a concern with the city council. Um, I don't think that we would necessarily need like oil water separators or anything. In most shops and in my shop specifically, um, any you know liquids that are taken from a vehicle are put into a 55 gallon drum. Um, there's a company called Crystal Clean that would come and they'd pump out that hazardous waste um, anything that is to fall, say, like from a car on a lift onto the ground, um, I would use um, speedy dry absorbent. It's a lot like kitty litter. Um, it just absorbs all the liquid. You shovel it up, put it in the trash, you dispose of it safely. Um, let me see. Do, 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 do. Right, so um, parking would be contained on the property um, and to the parcels of land controlled you know, by the owner of this property. Um, I don't think that this 
harms the public in any sort of way. Um, and I hope to be able to provide a service to the community of the downtown residents, you know, who need local car care and aren't able to travel farther. Um, let me see. Do, 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 do. So anyways, I guess closing on that statement here, you know, as being someone who's from this community, like I just want to be a positive part of our community here in Summersworth. So um, the fourth thing here uh, would be surrounding property values um, not being diminished. Um, obviously, this building, it was purpose built as a garage. As you mentioned, it operated as a garage for 50 years. Um, I, I don't think that you know, using it for that intent would change any property values, especially being adjacent to a property that already is being used for that. Um, so I don't, I don't think that there's any real loss of value from that. Um, so then number five would be the literal uh, enforcement um, of this ordinance uh, having, an, having a hardship. Um, so like I said earlier, this was a purpose-built building. Um, to use this for another use, it would require substantial you know, renovations and improvements. Um, this property doesn't have any air conditioning. Um, the floor isn't level. Um, the layout isn't necessarily conducive to any other use. Um, I don't know if your paperwork has the layout or anything on it, but essentially, if you're looking at it, it's got two bays here. Um, there is a little area in the back. Um, it's connected by like a little closet. There is a small waiting room that's probably, you know, 15 feet by eight feet. Um, and then a bathroom right in the middle there. Um, so, you know, I don't know that that'd be conducive for retail or a restaurant or anything like that. Um, I think that that'd require, you know, unnecessary renovations to accommodate that. Um, let's see. So uh, the, the proposed use is a reasonable one given the nature of the building and, it's, um, and the adjacent building's use. Um, I, I intend to draw from a different clientele um, like I said, I'm master certified Volkswagen. I really, I specialize in European cars, um, kind of like the, the higher end, like Audis and BMWs and Volkswagens and stuff like that. Um, so, you know, I would bring in a lot of that business myself. I don't know that I'd take a ton from Rulos next door. Um, so let me see what else I had here. Um, I, I know that we've spoken about collaborating with the neighbors um as far as like i don't have the ability in that small building to lift like big box trucks or anything like that so i could certainly sublet things to them too as i need them to be um as of last year um, this use was allowed via a special permit um, given the nature of the building um being built for a garage um, and the challenges of a retrofit for another use we believe that this would be the highest and best use for the property um, and a variance should be granted for this use. Um, now, I just because I was doing the Google machine at home, and I don't know as much as you guys do, so you can tell me if this applies or it doesn't, um, but I was reading into RSA 674.19, um, prohibits the application of zoning ordinances to buildings in existence prior to the enactment of the ordinance provision um, when there is a zoning change, structures can still be used as constructed. Uh, the law does grant grandfather rights based upon the mind and intent of the property owner, but upon the actual nature of structures. Um, and that was from McKenzie versus Town of Eaton uh, Zoning Board. Um, so I'd be happy to take any questions. Okay. So first is, uh, would the, you all set? Oh, yeah, yeah, absolutely. The other gentleman, you want to speak? This is Brian. Yeah. So state, please state your name and your, your occupation or address or applicability to the. Perfect. So my name is Ryan Dano. I'm a commercial real estate broker. Um, I have quite a few listings in Summersworth and uh, 40 Main Street happens to be one of them. We've been working to put a tenant in this space for quite a long time. Um, as you know, Chris mentioned, most of the uses that we've been, or tenants that come to us have been uh, auto mechanics. And unfortunately, when we were going through this process last year, um, 
you know, we lost a mechanic while we were going through the process as it's, it kind of takes some time, obviously, to go to these meetings and, and move the ball. So uh, we were happy when we found Chris. Uh, we think it's a good fit, and, you know, we look forward to, you know, we've already done some changes to the building to try and, you know, make it nicer for the community, but look forward to, to reinvigorating kind of that property. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much. Okay, going back. Questions for the applicant? Mr. Fredette. How many technicians do you plan on employing in this building, and how many vehicles, to piggyback off that, do you plan on servicing in a day? Oh, you know what? That's a wonderful question. So at first, um, it would just be myself and one other. Um, I would love to, I mean, there's only two bays, so you can only do so much in that space. Um, however, I, I work on cars. I love cars. I think that my passion, what I'm better at, is really interacting with the community. So I'd rather be able to focus on the front of the house stuff, um, which I do a lot of currently. So max, two technicians myself um how many cars do i plan to do a day um generally if you're efficient you can do about five cars a day depending on what the work is though right so i mean if something is an eight hour job you know that's going to take the entire day so maybe some days i do three cars maybe some days i do 10 cars um there's not a ton of parking anyways on that lot there's about five spots and then maybe a handicap spot um, right in the very front of the building. Um, so, you know, I, I would be limited to that as well. Okay. Mr. Brooks. <clears throat> so I've worked in the automotive industry my whole life between awesome. towing, car sales, car repairs, specialized salvage yard. I um, understand everything you're saying. Um, would you be looking to do any long-term projects or would these be mostly a short service as needed for a vehicle as being run no, in other words would you be you would you be doing anything like restorations that might have vehicles sitting there for an extended amount of time so currently no i don't think that i'm equipped to accommodate something like that um you know i i don't think that i've got enough parking spots uh, to accommodate cars sitting like I'd really need to be turning over those spots so I could get more cars in um, So I guess my my short answer would be no um, I, I do plan on you know taking on jobs like engines and transmissions and things like that that might take you know One day or two days something like that, but certainly not over, you know, like a week span or something like that okay. I just I ask this because we've We've been down this road before with this town and <clears throat> um, I guess my next question is, if we did grant this, would you be prepared to follow this to court where the city council would probably take it next? Because the last time we approved one in a very similar situation, that's where it ended up. Um, Just to give you a heads up. I appreciate the heads up. Um, I, I did get kind of mixed reviews from the city council when I came up here a couple weeks ago. Um, so I do understand their hesitancy on this. Um, am I prepared to? Sure. I, you know, I, I think that positive attitudes prevail, and hopefully, you know, I can be reasonable enough that someone would want to work with me. Um, I'm totally happy to work with the city um, to make my business work for the community. Um, so, like, I'm, I'm malleable, and I'm, I'm happy to take any. Um, tips or ideas that you guys may have to, to make this fit better. Um, but, you know, I'm certainly happy to work with anybody. I just want to note for the record, he was, um, when he says city council, he means planning board. Oh, I'm so sorry. Yes, that's okay. what I mean. <laughs> yeah, yeah, planning board will planning. oversee stuff. But yep. I only say this because, you know, I understand that the automotive world gets a bad rap for having junk vehicles sitting around. I run a junkyard I have for 10 years. There's repair shops around here that look more like a junkyard than my place does. So unfortunately that bad rap follows everybody that does automotive repairs, period. It just, it's a black eye on the industry. So I just, a lot of what you say here makes perfect sense. I understand the building's purpose built for it. I've sat on this board where we've had buildings that are purpose built and seen it not matter because 
unfortunately, the way zoning laws and rulings at courts have gone, that really doesn't matter many times, as sad as that is. Um, so, you know, that's why I asked about extended time with vehicles, because that's, that's what makes it look like a junkyard. But if right. you're bringing in a vehicle, servicing it, it's there for the day, maybe two days if you get to wait for parts. Maybe it's an extended job that takes more than one day. You know, I, I could see that this could fit in down there. Unfortunately, though, zoning says no. And zoning says no to well, most of the city when you look at the zoning for automotive-related stuff. So it's a very th tough thing for you to find a location, um, even if the building is purpose-built, unfortunately. Just my observations on this, I, I wish there was some more common sense to zoning sometimes. For my people, I appreciate that. Mr. Verdere. So a big challenge, and I've been a customer of Rulo's on and off throughout the years, is parking. And a big challenge, I think, that when I look at this is you have a lot, as you said, with maybe six to eight parking spaces that you're going to fill with two to three employee cars, hypothetically, the overflow of those vehicles ends up across the street. And I think my understanding is, and going to the spirit of the ordinance, another thing I'm struggling with is the city council made a decision specifically to rezone this area with the idea that whatever it was, that maybe they were trying to change the scope. So I guess I'm hoping you can convince me that this doesn't go against the spirit of the ordinance. Respond to that? Okay, yes. Sorry, I didn't know if yeah, I was supposed it, to It was a that. question, I think. Yeah, yes. yeah. So convince you that it's not against the spirit of the ordinance. Um, I totally understand the parking concerns. Um, something that I was considering, and I don't know what the logistics of this are, right? Um, but I do know there is a big empty parking lot over by um, one um, Summersworth Plaza out behind there with a ton of parking. And I didn't know if maybe someone there would let me rent parking spots um, as far as like maybe employee cars to park there during the day um, or, you know, finished vehicles that are ready to be picked up to relieve some of the parking um, from that particular lot. Um, so I do understand the concern of having a bunch of cars parked up there, overflow being in the parallel parking spots across the street. Is that correct? Is that what we're concerned about? So, you know, certainly I'm, I'm limited by the parking, and, and I agree with that. Um, but I, I, I think I've got some creative solutions if, you know, people are willing to work with me on them, and I'm happy to take any feedback and incorporate it. Okay. Mr. Vincent, you had your hand up. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, and thanks a lot for taking my question. <clears throat> so who owns the property now? Um, well, so... Linda Ott owns it. There is a, what's the name of the real estate company that she's, Let Realty Group. Let Realty Group. So it's Let Realty Group is whom owns that property. Um, from my understanding, they purchased it in 2022 um, to use that as storage. Um, since they no longer have a use for the storage, they're trying to lease this out. So with um, another auto repair shop right next door, have you had a conversation with Marty? Uh, Rula? Actually, I went down there um, when I toured the property, and I did have a conversation over there. Um, you know, I mean, we're all in this business, and you know, okay. I think that we all are pretty willing to work together. Something that was also um, discussed and, you know, something that I'd love to work with is possibly sharing the dumpster that's on their property and me paying some to the dumpster. Um, to be able to use it and then not having a second dumpster on this property taking up space needing to be fenced in. <coughs> um, but, yeah, I mean, I, I haven't had any negative response or anything, but I'm also not necessarily trying to take any business from him either. So I still have another question for you, but I need to revert to the planner real quick. Um, so you said that just as long as the business doesn't lapse, like... Marty Rulo's place. If someone bought that, say if this gentleman bought Marty Rulo's, that business could stay there, correct? 
Correct. Okay. Someone new could operate it. It's not owner specific, such as with this variance. This variance would travel with the land, not the tenant specifically. So talking out loud here, I, th I thought, Marty, not to kill your sale over there, yeah. Mr. Realtor, behind him. Uh, I thought Marty Rules was for sale, but maybe, I don't know, if this doesn't work out for you, maybe that's something, that, uh, a, f a friendly thing. I'm not in that position to say I'm just, just I just didn't know really how Marty uh, was going to like another repair shop. And listen, I get it. It's all business. So um, it really doesn't sometimes matter, so to speak. Business is business. Um, what really caught my um, attention was, and I understand that it's against zoning, this building has stayed vacant, and where does it go from here? Um, so um, that, that kind of caught my eye uh, with the putting something into it and kind of making it better. Um, I don't know how the outcome is going to come, but uh, thank you for answering my questions. <laughs> thank you. Can I can I respond? Sure. Also, absolutely. Um, as far as Marty goes, I do know he's getting older, and um, you know maybe in the future, um, if he does decide to step away or whatever, I you know I may be interested in expanding if I do well in this spot, especially being adjacent to it. Um, but yeah, I mean I certainly I. I respect what he's done over many, 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 many years over there. All right. Further questions for the applicant? La uh, last comments by the applicant. Oh, um, well, I mean, I, I think I've said everything that I can think to say, um, but thank you guys all for your time. Um, I, I respect what you guys are doing here. Um, hopefully, you know, we can all work together and make something happen. I'd, I'd love to be a part of this community. Okay. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Have a seat. We'll close the public hearing. I don't see if there's any regional impact. Does anyone see there is a regional impact? Seeing none, we'll look for a motion. <coughs> Mr. Brooks. I move that the variance request for Christopher Lavalette Schultz. I hope I pronounce that right. Does not have potential for regional impact. Okay, we have a motion. Do we have a second? Second by Mr. Perkins. Any discussion? Discuss, the motion is that it does not have regional impact. Any discussion on the motion? See no discussion. I'll raise your right hand. Five zero. Motion passes. Discussion. Mr. Fredak. I appreciate what the applicant's trying to do. I do. I think the challenge for me, as I stated to the applicant, is it's contrary to the spirit of a relatively new ordinance. And I just can't lose sight of that. And I can't see further anything unique about the property that convinces me that this is going to be a better fit. If I thought there was more parking, it, it's going to be a challenge over there. And it is contrary to the spirit of the ordinance. And I appreciate Mr. Brooks's comments about the automotive industry. But I also think that, unfortunately, driving around and seeing some of the facilities in town, including the one I live next door to, they do, over time, accumulate stuff and cars that are waiting for approval and et cetera, et cetera. And I just think my understanding of where the city's trying to go with this area, the direction they're trying to go, and what the city council's trying to do, this is contrary to that. And for that reason, I, I can't support this. OK. Ms. Ms. Closet, I have a question for you before we go. So I'm confused about this. That we, note 9 says 2013, but I keep he people mentioning last year or something. There changed. was a recent um, amendment to the ordinance related to motor vehicle uses. Um, they were permitted by special exception in the residential commercial district, which is um, typically around High Street. The recent revision removed that, um, so they are only... Um, all of the motor vehicle uses are only allowable in the between commercial, industrial, and industrial. Some of them are not allowed in industrial. So the but that's the reference that people are making. Like um, the business I district. I think business district has not been allowable since 2013, okay. which is what Note Nine attached to that B is. Oh, I understood. Yeah. Okay, Mr. Brooks. <clears throat> so. This makes a ton of sense to me to run a business like this out of this garage. 
but yet we had a very similar situation with a v long vacant garage with more land I believe that we approved a variance for and that promptly got taken to court by the City Council versus the ZBA because we granted a variance I anticipate the same thing happening again if we grant this one and I have to agree I don't see the hardship I don't see the, the to use the proper terms here the spirit of the ordinance <coughs> in this case so as much as I would personally like to say yes to this based on our zoning our criteria we're supposed to look at I can't say that I support a variance it's a tough situation sometimes zoning prevents businesses from developing up in a downtown and making a more vibrant downtown and unfortunately I think this is one of those situations okay, and just to clarify that the, the, the reason is the zoning board um, the, the criteria was the reason the zoning board didn't win that case as you might say is that we did not adequately document the criteria we used to come to that decision I have to say that our decision was wrong that we did not adequately document how we came to that decision mm. but just and, and, and as you know each applicant stands on its own each, of, each property stands of on course its own. mr. Vincent thank you again mr. chairman so yeah sitting on this board you know you want to sometimes say yes to everybody and even when you want to say yes sometimes you can't say yes you have to say no uh, I understand what the City Council wants um, I understand why this zoning was changed um, because um, well let's just take for an example the next door property and I don't mean to be picking on them it's a repair shop most of the time there's 25 cars in the parking lot <laughs> they're all in disrepair it doesn't look good so that's why we decided or th yeah that's why the City Council decided to move that type of zoning elsewhere so it doesn't have a um, direct uh, influence on the property about her because that diminishes property value um, like like mr. Brooks said you know what who knows what's going to happen with this property because an auto repair place fits there but because it sits on the edge uh, of the downtown they want to kind of make it a different type of look yeah I'm gonna have to vote against it okay, further discussion mr. for you know and yes it was definitely purpose-built as a auto garage I would agree with that but there was a another building downtown that was purpose-built as a gas station that became a bank that's now a multi-family property that was redeveloped it's challenging but there are redevelopment options and sometimes those are things that unfortunately property owners have to look at and I just I would see that as where this one's probably going to have to end up. It happened for the poli former police station as well. So, you know, it's unfortunate, but in a little bit longer process, but I think that's where this one needs to go because I think this just puts the city council, if we grant this, I think we're putting the city council in an unfair position. Okay, so with the discussion, um, what criteria, which of the criteria does the applicant not meet? Um, the values of surrounding property values for I would say that as mr. Vincent said um, auto repair facilities usually create an environment that does diminish surrounding property values um, I can't find a and I would say that this this goes against the spirit of the ordinance I would say those are the strongest two for me I would agree okay. mr. Brooks I would agree that it's contrary to the spirit of the ordinance I would also point out that I don't see a hardship with the special conditions that would grant the variance um, 
the property values really depends on how it's taken care of and we don't know until he sets up shop so i don't want to lay that on it but i certainly agree with the spirit of the ordinance and the hardship Mr. for me i would say the the I, I agree on the hardship but i would say the spirit of the ordinance is is the strongest yeah, I would agree spirit of ordinance is the strongest. I, I would also agree with the value of the property. I think in general, auto repair, it, unfortunately, not, not that it, they generally will bring, if it's a business district, auto repair, just driving down an auto repair, it brings down to the value of the neighborhood pro, neighboring property. Hardship, is there a special condition of the property that makes it such that the, the zoning ordinance is unfairly applied to it? It's a building, it is purposely Box. built, but is that enough? I'm not sure that that's enough, not that I could find a special purpose. Mr. Fredat? I would agree. I mean, it is. it was purpose-built to be an auto facility, but there was a flooring store in there a couple of years ago, and it is fundamentally a, a brick and concrete box. Okay. Further discussion? So right now we have the, as I would call them, one, three, and five, or the hardship, the spirit, and the property values. Any further discussion? Maintain a motion. Mr. Fredette? If it would please the chairman, I'd like to make a motion, please. Yes, you may. After review of the application, the file, and all the reason and all the information presented to the board, I feel that the five criteria have not been satisfied, uh, particularly criteria one three and five which are the value the hardship and the spirit and the value the hardship and the spirit and i move that property value, property value sorry and i move that the request for christopher lavalette schulte for a variance from table 4.a.5 for a motor vehicle repair garage use on a property located at 40 main street be denied i'll second that okay we have a motion of a second discussion on the motion motion is to deny the, deny the variance based on not meeting the criteria, three of the criteria, the value of the surrounding properties would be diminished, it does not have a specific hardship that unfairly burns it, and it does not meet the spirit of the ordinance. All those in favor of the motion, raise your right hand. 5-0, the motion is passed. The variance is denied. Thank you, sir. Uh, any other new business come before the board? Any other new business, Ms. Crosley? No. Any other new business from board members? No. Chair to entertain a motion to adjourn. I'll make a, mo I'll make a motion that we adjourn. We have a motion. And second. We have a second by Mr. Brooks. All those in favor? We are adjourned, 5-0.